Hello everybody, welcome back to the shop. In this video, we talk about this. This is the whole reworked swing arm for the go-kart. And that's right, this thing is gonna have suspension in the back now. All right, so let me explain the method to my madness here real quick before I continue on. Basically, this is what's going to make it possible. This is a, what was a trailing arm off of a early 2000s trailblazer. It just so happened to be that it's the same diameter and it looks like the same thickness as the pipe I used on this frame. Basically, it's going to be going in place right about there and I made the cut of how long I want this to be I went off of the sleeve right here out three inches to get somewhere close that's basically about where I want it so what I'm going to do I'm going to make my close cut while this back half is still attached to the frame and then I'll take and clean it up later because it's easier to cut this piece now since it's still attached than to fight with it while it's off of it this is the final cut So that part you just seen was actually this getting cut off from the back. I already went ahead and made all of my cuts and welds to make sure that I didn't waste time because this took a while. First things first are these eyelets. And whenever at first when they got cut, they looked like the plumbus off of Rick and Morty. Plumbuses. Everyone has a plumbus in their home. So these are actually lower trailing arm bushings for a early 2000s GM Trailblazer Envoy that I cut down to like three inches from here to out here. And it actually worked out pretty well. Next part I did to make sure that everything was square before I did this, I cut another cross member out to go between the two eyelets to help brace up these two eyelets and also brace the two supports for the back. Now I do have this pipe right here tack walled in place at the very end, but I'm not too sure if I'm actually going to keep this set up. Like I, I'm playing back and forth. There is something I want to do with this, the rear brakes that you guys will like and we'll see in the future. But right now I'm going to leave it be because it works just fine. And I also do plan of having a cross member go between here to help brace the engine plate and the tire everything together. So with that said, I'm going to show you my idea for the new engine plate. Alrighty, so another improvement for this rear end is this pretty gnarly engine plate. Now it is pretty obvious the four holes are the slots, that way the engine can move back and forth for chain adjustment. Back here, I have this piece of angle iron to act as an oil trough because I don't want oil to spill everywhere and cause a mess because that really kind of irritates me. So just have the oil run off back here, either come out of these slots or to the side. It's controlled and it won't be too bad. Now up here, this is a different story because I've been having a lot of issues with this chain hopping and doing all sorts of weird stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. I have decided to make a girdle along with it. Now, commenters don't say anything about this. I don't have a wire brush, so I can't clean it. But as you can see, I do have bolts in here. 
And this is where that girdle comes into play. So basically, when I adjust the chain on this, I loosen up the four plate bolts that actually bolt the engine to this plate. And I can actually use these bolts to fine tune the chain adjustment. And once I get it to where I want it, I lock down, well actually I back these bolts off, I lock down where I want the chain, and then I re-tighten these up, and there's going to be a jam on here too. And what that's going to do is it's going to apply back pressure on the engine, because when this thing drives, it's vibrating through this plate, and every time you give it a hard jerk through the drive line, it wants to pull the engine. So I think this is a much better way of holding the engine back. As I hope so, as this is one pretty beefy plate. Alrighty, so I did skip way ahead of what I should be doing. So let me show you guys what happened. So of course, this is actually in and it's welded to the frame and it looks honestly you can't really tell unless you really get a good look at it, but that plate definitely looks a lot better than what it was before. Then the swing runs to the back, and here are the girdle bolts. Now this is kind of bad how I have it set up because the longer the bolt, the weaker it is, but in my case, the bolt heads hit the axle, and I can't have short ones, and I need longer ones. So this is the setup I have. Of course, these bolts have only like one inch of thread and it's a giant shoulder bolt. I believe that's what you call them. So what I had to do was I had to take a tap and tap thread almost way past halfway of the bolt. That way I have enough thread. As you can see right in there, that is where the girdle rests. And how I have this set up is you take, basically you pretend this bolt's loose, both of these bolts are loose. You take and tighten the bolt up to it just touches the engine on both sides and then basically go a quarter turn and then tighten the jam nuts down and that's where the girdle sits. What I had to do to get this plate where it's sitting is one, I put in that cross member right down here. It still needs welded up, but it's in place. But basically I took and made probably eight different measurements. I did my first measurement, <clears throat> excuse me, off of this plate to the axle on both sides, then to this plate again, to this cross member. So I'm gonna measure from this plate to the inside of this pipe, and then right to here, to the inside of the pipe again. Measured from this lip all the way to this pipe on each side. I also forgot to mention how I got everything set up. So before I had the plate onto this cradle, what I did was I took the engine and put it on the plate, slid it as far back as it will go, and tightened the bolts down to the plate. That way I have my essentially farthest back set for the plate. And then what I did is I got me some 420 chain, link will be down in the description, and I went and cut it and it was the exact same length as the 40 chain I had before. Actually, 41 chain, I always get those mixed up. It was 41 chain I had on here before, 420 is in its place now. Then I slid everything forward with the chain on and that basically got me my minimum set point. And the reason why I did that way is, is so that way when this chain starts to wear, because when chains wear, they stretch, I'll have all the adjustability in the world to adjust that chain. Yeah, and then I also mentioned too, the once used to be cast aluminum torque converter plate is now flat black with the fin sanded to give it a little bit of a pop. And it makes it that much better. Now, this is the final thing this rear end basically needs that is that pretty cool wicked header 
Now I didn't show building a header in the engine performance video because I had no idea what I was gonna do. Then a friend asked me, do you want this pipe? And I said, yeah. So he gave it to me. And it was like a long pipe. It had a, like a, I don't know, it was kind of like that almost. And I cut it, reshape it so it comes out at a 90. And I had it neck down here so it fits this pipe. I cut my original pipe off that was like that. and had another pipe cut right here. That way it comes out sharp and almost at a true 90. And it comes out exactly where I want it to be. And it comes out here and there is a huge gap between the pipe and the frame rail, which I'm perfectly okay with because I don't have my isolator right here. So it's going to physically pull the engine up or yeah, raise the engine up a little bit higher. So this little bit of a gap right here, I don't care, but I love how that looks. So this is the first time it's been started up in a while. <clears throat> If anybody's wondering, I did delete the governor in this thing and it basically did nothing. I'm just getting this thing all buttoned up, putting it back together just so I can put it back on the go-kart. And I had just noticed one thing that caught my attention. As you can see down here, the chain is nice and tight, the way it should be. But then I rotate it. And then the chain is loose again. Do that again. I spin it so much, the chain's getting a little tight. Give it a little more, and the chain's nice and tight. So, there is something wrong with this sprocket to where it is not centered with the axle. And what I mean by that is, <clears throat> it's not centered. It has a high spot in it, and it's causing it to basically run like a lobe or it's off center like an oval shape. And that would pretty much explain why this thing throws chains like it's nothing. Because once it gets to a certain point, it would hit that low spot and it would just bounce around. It would just slip. So I'm going to have to figure out where the high spot is. And I'm going to have to see if I can center this sprocket up. Now this, I plan on this being the main sprocket, the 54 tooth. And I still have the 48 tooth sprocket, which I can use for, I don't know, like a cooker speed going fast or anything. But I want to keep this as the main sprocket. So whatever's going on here needs to be addressed. So I'm actually going to break away and not show you guys what I'm going to do because I don't know what I'm going to do either. I'm going to come back and I'm going to explain everything I've done to make sure this thing is centered. All right, so I figured out why this thing wasn't spinning true with the axle. There was flashing in all four of the bolt holes from when this thing was stamped. So what I did was I took and I filed them in an oval shape and then recentered everything back up. This thing also has a brand new key to the span the whole width of both of these hubs. Stuck everything back together, retighten the chain up, tighten up the girdle bolts, tighten every single thing down. It lines up perfectly. I gotcha. I left you on a cliffhanger. Okay, but now at this point, the rear end is basically finished. I got a cradle. I have a way to 
make it swing basically i have fixed or hopefully have fixed the chain issue also made better improvements to that rear end and also for the best part i made that pretty cool header so i'll give you guys this guarantee by the end of the next video that go-kart will have hopefully a fully functioning rear swing arm and it'll be driving once again so if you guys haven't done already, make sure to leave a like. And if you have any type of questions, just ask down below. Because this was a pretty choppy video. Like I said, this has been going on for two months now. So I had some little segments film here, some little segments film there. So <laughs> it's kind of hard to keep track of whenever this stuff was filmed. But it's all together. I can finally get this thing uploaded and move on to the next step. All the parts I use will be in the description down below. And if you like what you see and like what I do, you might as well subscribe. It's down there too while you're looking for parts. So I'm going to leave this part here and I will see you guys in part two. That alone right there is the coolest shot ever.